And we are back at the Indianapolis Motor Speedway for the second event of our opening day of action here on Thursday. Again, we welcome those of you tuning in on the Road to Indy TV app or on IndyPro2000.com or potentially Road to Indy. TV. Now, my name is Rob Howden, the voice of the Road Dandy, presented by Cooper Tires. Welcome again to this uh, iconic racetrack, the Indianapolis Motor Speedway, as we get set to go for the first of three races in the Indy Pro 2000 category. Again, drivers taking to this 2.439 mile 14 corner racetrack. Let's have a look at the grid. Jumping right into it as the drivers have worked their way onto the racetrack already. And the, the grid as we get set to go. We'll see Artem Petrov on the pole positions. An all Hunkos racing front row. The 42 of Artem Petrov, a 120.273, qualifies on the pole. Bonus point for Artem. Two times a winner this year. Stingray Rob, his teammate, who scored her, his first win uh, in Indy Pro 2000. Stingray Rob at a pay at Idaho in that number two, starting in the second spot. Artem Petrov, of course, out of St. Petersburg, Russia. On row number two, Canadian and Singapore, and that's who we have on row two. Parker Thompson on the inside in the number nine for D-Force Racing, looking for his first win of the year. On the outside, winner from the opening round at Road America, one of our points challengers, Daniel Frost. Uh, it's getting set to go. Frost with turn three, Motorsports, Parker Thompson with D-Force Racing. Road number three, it'll be Hunter McElroy and Braden Eves, the two drivers that battled it out last year for the USF 2000 crown. Hunter McElroy out of Gold Coast, Australia, the rookie of the number 18 for Paps Racing. Starting alongside New Albany, Ohio's Braden Eves for exclusive autosport. He has the number one, the scholarship after winning USF 2000 last year. Row four, we'll have Colin Kaminsky, second year driver, at the third or, year, or fourth year driver in the series, first year actually in Indy Pro 2000. One of the front runners last year in USF 2000, Colin Kaminsky at a Homer Glen, Illinois, uh, starting in the uh, seventh position in the number 19, alongside your current point leader and the winner from Worldwide Technology Raceway, Devlin D. Francesco, who now hails out of Miami, Florida. Row five, we'll see Jacob Loomis alongside Antoine Camo. Row six, Moises De La Vera and Nate Aranda. Row seven, Bob Kaminsky and Manuel Suleiman. And starting at the tail of the field, uh, having not getting any practice, no qualifying in, Corey Enders set to start in the 15th position. So again, field working its way out of turn number 12, 13, and now 14. We're about set to go racing here again. Final race of the day, qualifying for race two tomorrow. Two events, round three and round four, or rather two and round three tomorrow. But we're going to get this one here underway to cap off the road to Indy component of this weekend. This Indy GP at the Indianapolis Motor Speedway. Field set, Hunkos on the inside, Hunkos on the outside, contact! We're not going to go green as a couple drivers together deep in the field. I do not believe we went green, no. Actually, no, we do have the green flag flying. Indeed, it's the green flag flying. I think we could potentially go directly to full course yellow. You'll see the contact in there. One driver potentially off, two more struggling away. They'll work their way down into one, two, and three, so we are underway in racing. I'm surprised we went green with the contact further back. I believe we got a car still stranded on the racetrack, but nonetheless, out of turn number four, through five and six for the first time. Not sure if we're going to go yellow yet indeed. Full course yellow here at start finish. So full course yellow underway. The opening corners in the books. We'll see how it all sets up. Yellow flags flying. Everybody coming down to a stop. One of the Hunkos cars going further backwards. The AMR safety team quickly out to be able to get behind the drivers to work their way over to the corner. So that happened further back in the pack, and I want to say uh, potentially involving Bob Kaminsky. Bob definitely involved. I want to say maybe Moses De La Vera as well. We'll see. There's a number of drivers uh, kind of getting caught up there. Some contact coming out as they were just starting to spool things up. Somebody obviously checked up a little bit, jumped on the gas a bit, then checked up. Somebody else trying to get out of the way. Chaos ensued deep in the field. Watching the drivers come through here now. We'll see how they resort them as well. Of, of course, they'll be getting on the radio. You can, I'll tell you this now, folks. You don't get an, an often get a good shot at this, but I'm actually sitting right beside race control, and you can see them going to work here right now. Tony Cotman and Johnny Unts are having a really good look at the start here to get their best shot at potentially what happened. A couple drivers, at least one into pit lane already. You can see that. Driver locking it up, coming to get down to – Pit lane speed. That's one of the D-Force cars, I think. 
So that driver in the pit lane, Bob Kaminsky and Manuel Suleiman. So that's Suleiman in the pit lane. Kaminsky, I, I believe, the driver who is stranded on the racetrack. So Suleiman coming into pit lane, crew heading out to his car very quickly to have a good look at it, at it. As they come across the line, Artem Petrov, P1, Parker Thompson into second. Third is Hunter McElroy. Fourth, Stingray Rob. Fifth, Braden Eves. Sixth is Devlin DeFrancesco. Seventh, Colin Kaminsky. Eighth, Nate Aranda. Ninth, Antoine Camo. Tenth is Daniel Frost. Eleventh is Corey Enders. And again, we've got to get everybody to reset coming through here. Because I, I would hazard a guess this may not be exactly the way they're going to line up when we go back to racing because it was that mad dash coming out of turn number four through the switchback five and six down the straightaway. Then the yellow flag came out. So I believe once the yellow flag comes out, they'll freeze the grid at that point. So they're going to have to get a really good look at the videos and the replay to decide how they're going to set things up. But again, as I said, to get this opportunity to have a look at what's going on in race control, I think it's tremendous. The work, of course, being done. I think a lot of times people think that it's just a quick, easy decision. But no, a lot of discussion happening right now. A lot of looking at, at video to make sure it's done correctly. Kind of uh, nice to be able to see behind the curtain to a certain extent. It'd probably be a good, uh, good component for a future Road to Indy TV episode, maybe. Get a chance to see uh, what happens, how this all works out, and, and what, the what the process is when something like this happens on the racetrack. Because there's, uh, it, it's a, uh, I, I don't want to say it's, there's no, there's zero knee jerk reaction. It's a process that, that they're going through of what they're doing to to see exactly what happened here. Penalties would have to be laid down depending on the contact. There's a move around right there. So again, radio contact with the drivers, Jim Swintel, of course. Uh, one of the veterans of IndyCar race control, the voice of race control now as well, former uh, flagman starter himself. And uh, Jim, the voice that the drivers all hear on the radio when race control does come across. And he's, uh, again, on the radio even more now, I believe, getting Stingray Rob to drive around the outside of Hunter McElroy. So as I said, the way that they came to the grid or to the, uh, to the line when the checkered flag was coming out, rather, rather the, uh, the yellow flag was coming out, they essentially have to take a snapshot of what happened. Where the, where were they? So we'll see the first change. There's Petrov. Indeed, Stingray Rob being moved up front. Let's see what else we got for a move here. Anybody else moving further back? So it'll move Stingray Rob into the third. Hunter McElroy fourth. Braden Eves in fifth, I believe. Sixth, Francesco. Seventh, Kaminsky. Eighth, Aranda. Ninth, Camo. Tenth, Daniel Frost. Jacob Loomis in 12th behind Corey Enders, and then Moises De La Vera. Bob Kaminsky and Manuel Suleiman, the two drivers out of the race. We'll see if they're able to repair the machine of Suleiman to get him back out here. Manuel comes into the race sixth in points, and that's, the, I think, one of the key things. Unlike what we have in USF 2000, where Christian Rasmussen had such a massive lead with those six wins, and it will take a lot for everybody to catch back up to him, but it's definitely still doable knowing that uh, a DNF is around the corner for anyone. You can never count anybody out. Uh, you know, you used to go back and look at the uh, the season with Pato Award and Aaron Tielitz and Pro Mazda, and I want to say that Pato won six of the first seven races, and then Aaron turned the tides at Road America and came back and was actually able to steal the championship away at Mazda Raceway Laguna Seca, what, what it was called then. Of course, WeatherTech Raceway Laguna Seca now. Uh, much different here in Indy Pro, as really you go back to Parker Thompson in eighth position, and it's only 71 points. And you think about a triple header, there are uh, 96 points up for grabs in a triple header. And if you start getting some DNFs, pretty easy to change that around. Devlin DeFrancesco with the lead coming in over Stingray Rob coming off that big victory at uh, Worldwide Technology Raceway. Figuring out whether or not we're ready to go back to green here. We'll flick back around, hopefully get a shot of them coming through 13 and 14. There's 13. That's uh, actually 11 into 12. There's 12. Let's fast forward a little more. 
I want to see if that pace car is going to duck on off. We've got one driver coming in late here. Now, still full course yellow at start finish. Quick look over my shoulder. I'm essentially right here in the second floor of the Pagoda, right across from start finish by the Yard of Bricks. So not the start really we were looking for in terms of getting that exciting run down into turn number one. We did have some chaos, and it happened early. Again, hello to those of you tuning in on the Road to Indy TV app or on IndyPro2000.com. Let us know where you are watching from. We'd love to hear it. Send us a send, Feel free to send us a DM to the uh, Road to Indy, any of the old Road to Indy, whether it's IndyPro2000 on the Facebook page, Twitter, or Road to Indy Official uh, on Instagram. You can send to the Road to Indy TV account. You can send to mine as well at the Road to Indy Insider. Love to know when you're, where you're listening from. So let's give you the lineup to reset because I believe they've got everybody into position now. Artem Petrov, indeed, the leader from the pole. Parker Thompson able to jump up to second. Now they've got Hunter McElroy back into third. Stingray Rob fourth. Appears that they've reset that. Again, looking at more video, that's the whole concept. As I said, they continue to look at the video. So I believe Hunter McElroy back into third, so they've elected to move him to P3. Stingray Rob in fourth spot. Fifth is Braden Eve, sixth Devlin D. Francesco, seven Colin Kaminsky, eighth Nate Aranda, ninth Antoine Camo, tenth Daniel Frost, eleventh Corey Enders, twelfth Moises De La Vera, and thirteenth will be Jacob Loomis. Bob Kaminsky, of course, out with the damage, and we have not seen Manuel Suleiman back on the racetrack as of yet either. All right, pace car has bailed out and has pulled uh, ahead enough that they're going to be able to make the move. Big jump here for Artem Petrov. That seems a little early and a little often. Yeah, he's coming hard on the out of turn number 12 and 13 already. That's a big early start for Petrov. In fact, we've got a battle for second already between Thompson and McElroy. I know that mid-Ohio we have the punch-off line as they come out of the final corner. I'm not sure where the actual punch-off is, uh, the start line here for uh, IMS and the road course. I'll make sure I ask that, but here's a pass to the inside. Hunter McElroy is going to make a move around Parker Thompson. So move McElroy to second. Thompson goes back to third. Fourth is Stingray Rob. Look at that battle, fifth, sixth, and seventh on top of each other. That's uh, DeFrancesco right in there. Braden Eves might have been able to get a spot. I think Eves may be up to P4. Wow, there's a lot of action here. No, Eve's still P5. There's P5 is Eves. I think six now is Colin Kaminsky. Stingray Rob going to work on Parker Thompson. Luckily, no. Oh, one driver off. That's DeFrancesco. DeFrancesco and Kaminsky have gone off. DeFrancesco fully off and will roll back on the other side. Oh, almost taken out there. That's a side-by-side -side action. Oh, aggressive as DeFrancesco trying to hold him off. That might have been Antoine Camo, I think. Look at this side. Look at this action further back now. DeFrancesco on full defense mode. Everybody stacking up behind him. Antoine Camo's in there. Enders, Frost, Delavera, Loomis. Down into turn number seven. The battle between DeFrancesco and Kaminsky did not go their way. That might be Kaminsky right in there as well. Let's reset as they come across the line again. Lap five, Petrov lead the leader. McElroy second. Stingray Rob third. Parker Thompson fourth. Braden Eves fifth. 2.4 seconds back to Antoine Camo. He was able to get by DeFrancesco and off the racetrack. It's straight across. Another driver off here. That might have been Camo. That's going to give DeFrancesco another position. Yeah, Antoine Camo, I believe, heading off. So DeFrancesco up to sixth. Camo seventh. Kaminsky eighth. Frost ninth. Aranda tenth. Braden Eve starting to close up a little bit here on Parker Thompson. And again, just like we saw in USF 2000, the point leader, Devlin DeFrancesco, 
not up front like he was at Worldwide Technology Raceway. There he is there in that yellow and orange machine for Andretti Steinbrenner Autosport. Well back. Front five drivers able to stretch away. So this is going to be one of those swaps in the championship battle in this particular race. Now we have three races here. This is the first of a triple header for both USF 2000 and Indy Pro. So a good opportunity for the championship to really start to develop, whether it's forward or backward for whatever driver it may be. Christian Rasmussen, of course, his first non-victory, non-podium of the year after six wins in USF 2000. Big victory for, as we said, the drivers that were able to finish in front of him. Eduardo Barrichello, a strong win in USF 2000. Reese Gold right there as well, Kiko Porto. Oh, there's an outbreaker there. Kaminsky going too deep into turn one. He'll lose a couple of spots. Nate Aranda able to slip through. Drivers further back in the pack battling it out right now. But it's Artem Petrov and Stingray Rob, P1 and P2, although Petrov with a 1.5 second advantage. He's trying to grab his third win of the year. Petrov winning at Road America, round number two. Won at Mid-Ohio as well, so two victories. Trying to get his third natural terrain road course win. Of course, the only street circuit we may see this year would be St. Petersburg at the end of October. With Petrov looking to grab his third win at his third different venue. Artem comes into the championship sitting in the fifth position and uh, an eight-pointer in the opening round at St. Petersburg. Tough, and of course, had some issues as well in the third round at Mid-Ohio. Looking to try to rebound here. Another win would most definitely get him back where he needs to be. DeFrancesco now down to sixth position, 5.2 seconds back. Daniel Frost has been an absolute charger at every event we've been to. Doesn't seem to have the speed out of the gate right now. Daniel started fourth, got shuffled back. There's your lead group right there, your top five drivers in a row. Petrov, Stingray Rob, Hunter McElroy, Parker Thompson, Braden Eves. Four different teams in the top five, but Junkos runs one, two. Solid run. For Hunkos Racing out front now. Could have a battle for sure between Braden Eves and Parker Thompson. Eves now running in the fifth spot, trying to put that pressure on. Remember, a 20 lap race for drivers here in Indy Pro 2000. Braden Eves, a double winner last year here in USF. Coming in and really putting his stamp on the season championship. He got up to a fantastic start. Softened up on the success midway through the season a little bit as Hunter McElroy kind of was one of the drivers to move to the forefront. Darren Keane and Christian Rasmussen sp splitting the wins on the streets of Toronto. And then Hunter kind of got things rolling at mid-Ohio and Portland and was able to really make things tight heading to the finale at Laguna Seca. Braden stepping up on that last weekend to do what he needed to do to win the championship. Here comes Stingray Rob with a big head of steam coming down to turn number seven. Does he make a move early? Here comes Stingray Rob looking to the inside. No. Not enough for Stingray. He backs off a little bit. Had a good look, but wow, they are battling it out through turns number eight, nine, over to ten. Through 11 now. I'll tell you, Hunter McElroy will be loving this. He just wants them to battle up front. This is like this is so strikingly the similar to what we saw in USF 2000 when Kiko Porto and Reese Gold were out front, and another Paps driver, Eduardo Barrichello, able to take full advantage of the leaders battling it out and get up there and scrap with them. That's what Barrichello did. He was able to get in front and win. McIlroy looking to do the same thing. Big move down to the inside on, I believe, Stingray Rob. Is McElroy going to go to P2? He'll go to the inside. Good run on the outside, though, for Stingray. But no, to the inside, book it. Hunter McElroy to P2. Six different winners in seven races. Hunter McElroy 
going by Artem Petrov, not Stingray Rob. It was actually Stingray into the lead. Petrov now going back to third. McElroy would be the seventh different winner of the 2020 campaign here in Indy Pro 2000. This category, stellar this year. Third year with the Tatus PM18 chassis. Everything dialed in. Chassis, tires, aero, the engine package from Elite. What a show we're putting on here right now. This is great. Top five drivers separated by just uh, over two and a half seconds. McElroy now setting out to see if he can't reel in Stingray Rob. Artem Petrov coming in to the clutches now of Parker Thompson. Coming into this uh, particular run here, the leader in the points, uh, Devlin DeFrancesco. About a 25-point lead over Stingray Rob. This would most definitely bring Stingray closer. Actually, it's going to bring everybody closer. Braden Eves in third. Uh, Daniel Frost will lose ground where he is right now. Petroff would close up. Parker Thompson would close up. So that's all the way back to eighth position. Hunter McElroy in seventh. He'd close up. And we're still a long way to go. Halfway point. Ten laps down. Ten to go. Stingray Rob looking to try to win that second round. I'll, I'll tell you. Stingray getting that win at Mid-Ohio, and I've said this so many times of my 10 years of calling the races here on the road to Indy. Once you get that first win in the books, the next ones start coming a lot easier. There's a, there's a level of confidence. It's a wave. Sometimes it's like opening the floodgates and drivers will just win a bunch of races. Stingray was in a major fight uh, trying to go to second with Cody Swanson in the Freedom 90 at Lucas Oil Raceway. Probably got a little too aggressive and burned the tires off a little bit. He faded late. Uh, faded early, actually, then held on. Then actually faded a bit more even late in the race, but still was a decent, a decent result for him. Nonetheless, came back and had a great battle with Braden Eves. Ended up finishing in the fourth position, I believe, at uh, Worldwide Technology Raceway. And now looking to try to see if he can't put a win in the books. Hunter McElroy looking to score his first Indy Pro 2000 victory. Runner up last year in the Cooper Tires USF 2000 championship. Oh, big lockup coming into turn number one for Hunter McElroy. Is he pushing from P2? I think so. Huge lockup. And that wasn't just a little one, that was huge. And, and I think, as we all know, once you've locked up a front tire like that, if it's aggressive, and significant, it's going to be easier to lock it up every time. You've got that light flat spot. So we'll keep an eye on Hunter to see if he's flat spots again coming into seven or potentially into one again. He's going to have to be really gentle. You can see how much closer uh, Stingray, or rather Artem Petrov has closed up. This is playing into the hands of Stingray Rob. As they run on the racetrack, Stingray Rob would close it within 11 points of Devlin DeFrancesco. Parker Thompson was back, I believe, in 7th or 8th in points as they run 67 back. So he's closed, would have closed up a ton of points too. This championship is going to be good. As I said, just looking at the points, you got to think out of the drivers who have won already, which consists of... Everybody in the top five, DeFrancesco, Rob, Eves, Frost, and Petroff. Next guys to look for would be Manuel Suleiman, Hunter McElroy, and Parker Thompson. That's sixth, seventh, and eighth in the points. Suleiman out of the race with the contact early. So you got to think right now, Hunter McElroy and Parker Thompson, who have shown top five speed, could be the two to fight for it. A really good battle further back, too. We know Parker Thompson... He's working his way up on Stingray Rob. And here comes Parker. He's close enough. That's Artem Petrov. Parker's going to go all the way down to the inside of the racetrack. Tick this out. Couldn't quite go. Oh, there's Artem way deep in the corner. And that's going to allow both Thompson and Braden Eves to come through. He was blocking all the way to the inside, coming down Holman Boulevard. Thompson, instead of going wide right, tried to pinch it down the inside, see if he could get to... Uh, Petrov to secede the corner, he didn't. But what he did do was overcook it to the inside. Didn't get on the brakes quick enough. Remember, there's no grip down to the inside of the racetrack either. 
pushed off, not all the way off the racetrack, but enough to put Parker Thompson to P3 and Braden knees up to fourth. This just keeps changing things in a big way. I love this. DeFrancesco, as they run on the racetrack with uh, seven laps to go, would have 198 points. Let's keep watching this fight further back. Oh, this is Petrov going at it with ease. Petrov is going to cook it through there. He gets back by. Petrov goes to P4 again. So this is a heated fight with Braden Eves. Eves looking to the inside of four. Petrov locks the break up a little bit as Eves backs out of it. This scrap could allow Devil and DeFrancesco to come back in from P6. Nonetheless, DeFrancesco is going to see a hit on the championship point lead, even after that big win in St. Louis. Eves will have to go to work now trying to find another way by Petrov. As they came across the line with Eves in fourth, that would have moved him to within 25 points of the leader. That's the battle we got going here. This is uh, tight in this championship scrap. Still two more races to go, too. Hunkos Racing is looking pretty good here at the road course at the Indianapolis Motor Speedway. I'll tell you that. Makes you start to think a little bit. They can go on a streak here, like we said, with with three races at a track. If you really hit the setup and you're and you're nailing it, and it's all working, and you can get three wins, you, you do some of the stuff that Christian Rasmus has done this year. That gives you an opportunity to make a really big change in the championship swing. That's Stingray Rob's focus here right now. You know, we go back to last year, Rasmuth Lint for Hunkos Racing winning both races here in Indy Pro 2000. Stingray Rob finished second in race number two. He was fourth in race number one, so fourth and second for Stingray. But Hunkos essentially three podiums, four top fives with their drivers. Not surprising they've come out of the gate strong here. Fourteen laps in the books last time by Stingray Rob Sleed, one point nine nine seconds, almost over that two minute mark or two second mark. And that's that's the gap you you want to get where the draft no longer plays a role whatsoever, and the guy behind you starts thinking more about holding on to second. You essentially start taking away the uh, the opportunity, try to demoralize the driver behind you a little bit. Well, you know what? He's just pulling away. I'm pushing as hard as I can. That's from Hunter McElroy right now. He's just thinking about lap times. Can he get closer? Locked it up again. What did I tell you? He is working that tire. It looks to be the right front for Hunter McElroy. Locked it up again. Last time by lap 15, Stingray Rob, six-tenths of a second quicker than McElroy, two-tenths quicker than Parker Thompson. Not a good lap for Braden Eves. He lost a ton. In fact, Braden Eves, as we if we'll hold this shot here, Braden Eves is under attack. Look at this. DeFrancesco has got by. Braden Eves has lost a spot to DeFrancesco, and now Daniel Frost. Potential right now, an issue for Braden Eves. Spotters telling me a potential vibration in the car. So Braden just trying to hold on now. He's trying to fight off Daniel Frost. So tough deal here for Braden. I don't know if it's contact or whatever, but he's got a vibration potentially in the right rear. Don't throw it. Oh, he spun. There's contact. He's over. Braden Eves, hard impact, upside down in turn number 11. That is hard impact on Braden Eves. He is upside down. That car went up and over quickly. It will go red here. Braden Eves, hard impact between he battling it out side by side with Daniel Frost. The AMR safety team will roll here. So a hard impact with a contact between uh, Daniel Frost and Braden Eves fighting it out for sixth position. Red flag has flown. Car went over and onto the roll hoop and then made more frontal contact as it rolled back out towards the wall, made contact with the wall. It's upside down at this point. The AMR safety team, of course, 
working their way there right now to Braden Eaves. Red flag flying, as we said. The AMR safety team is there. I will try to update as possible. They're going to see if they can't get this car flipped over to a certain extent. Drivers will come to a stop on, I believe, Holman Boulevard. Again, that was uh, the hit itself. The car just kind of, the way they were, the contact was, was wheel-to-wheel -wheel contact, and the car kind of shot up into the air and really kind of pirouetted up in the air and came down. Again, the AMR safety team is with uh, the car at this point. They're going to try to get this thing flipped over because it is, it came to a, a stop uh, upside down. As they run on the racetrack, Stingray Rob was the leader with uh, it's four laps remaining. Hunter McElroy in second, Parker Thompson third, Artem Petrov in fourth, fifth Devlin DeFrancesco. Again, additional safety team members because to be able to get this car flipped over, obviously they're going to want to get some more people there, and they're, they're rolling in there right now to make sure that they can get this car turned over as they need. They're going to have to get drivers on the other side or rather the safety team members on the other side so the, the car can come over. That was That's hard impact for Braden Eves, and that's going to be tough. Uh, I'll tell you, for the remainder of this weekend for Braden, this is going to be tough for the driver who won the championship last year in USF 2000. So again, four laps remaining. They've moved the drivers around the inside of the racetrack because, uh, of course, they're able to use that uh, essentially the out lane coming off uh, when you're running the 500, keeping them down to the bottom. So another lap will go in the books, I believe, as they come back around here. I I don't I can't see this being getting back going. We only have, I believe, four laps to go unless they go red flag here. They'll keep the cars uh, circulating. The the wrecker has now come out here as well. To bring that car in, that's uh, that car is going to be in, in rough shape. I don't know if we're, that car is not coming back this weekend. I don't think every corner of that car has been ripped off. Again, the safety team uh, right there with the Braden Eves. Again, one of the key components of uh, this program with running in the road to Indy is the fact that we do have the fortune of having the AMR IndyCar safety team with us at all of our events. They're going to work on it right now here. So again, from what I saw as the way it happened, I know that they're having a really good look at it right now. It appears to me when they were going side by side coming into the corner, Braden, I think, got up on the inner curb of the racetrack. That's at least what I saw. And as he got up on the inner curb, the car kind of, of course, started to spin sideways, got up, and it kind of rotated Frost at that point was all the way by, and I, I have a feeling that what happened was is that as the car started to rotate, at, think about it, you're pinned coming out of turn number 10 through 11. It's the, the thing's trucking, you're flat out. He got pitched down a little bit or at least was up on the curb. The car rotated clockwise and got sideways and likely just bit. Once it got sideways and started sliding, it hit, and uh, potentially at that point then did the – did and it didn't do – it's not like it barrel rolled a number of times, as I, as I recall, in, in watching it live. Seemed like it just kind of did, got in. It got in the air and came back down. As I said, again, laps going down. As we said, lap 17 now in the books. I have to believe with what we're dealing with here now. You can see the driver uh, circulating himself through the bottom part of the racetrack. That this thing's just going to run through to the end. I don't think that they're going to bring this the, the end. We have 18 minutes remaining, but I think they expect this is going to be. Uh, number one, a long cleanup, and of course, with the severity of the accident, anytime something like this happens, they're going to take a long time to make sure everything is fine with the driver because that was a pretty significant impact. Stingray Rob, if indeed they run this to the end, will likely be the race winner. I can't see us going back to green. Br uh, Hunter McElroy would be second, Parker Thompson in third. Fourth spot would be Artem Petrov, fifth, Devlin DeFrancesco. 6th, Daniel Frost, 7th, Colin Kaminsky, 8th, Corey Enders, 9th, Nate Arandon, 10th, Antoine Camo as they run on the racetrack.
Yeah, indeed. Uh, looking at live timing, they have elected to checker this race, so that is going to end the event. Again, doing what we can to potentially see some replays here uh, off camera, of course. Uh, Stingray Rob will get the victory. A big win for him, his second win of the season. Hunter McElray in second spot, Parker Thompson third, Artem Petrov in fourth, and Devlin DeFrancesco fifth. Sixth, Daniel Frost. Seventh, Colin Kaminsky. Eighth, Corey Enders. Ninth, Nate Aranda. And tenth, as I said, for Antoine Camo. So, folks, as we said, uh, incident on the racetrack for Braden Eves. The team continues to work with Braden at this point here to get him out of the car. So we're going to shut things down for the broadcast because, indeed, the race has been checkered. Stingray Rob will get the victory. Hunter McElroy second. Parker Thompson in third. Artem Petrov and Devlin DeFrancesco rounding out the top five. That wraps it up for racing here. Of course, we'll give you full updates of what's going on on the racetrack as soon as we possibly can. Make sure you follow all the social media. We'll give you an update uh, as soon as we get one or in regards to the incident involving Braden Eves over in turn number 11 and 12. Otherwise, that caps off our coverage here on Road to Indy TV for the day. Uh, we will be back tomorrow, folks. Lots of racing to come, as you know. We have practice, rather uh, qualifying uh, for race two for both USF 2000 and Indy Pro tomorrow morning. Race number two and race number three still to come. A lot of action here on the road to Indy TV. Uh, coming up tomorrow. And so, folks, make sure you come back and join us. We do appreciate it. On behalf of the road to Indy TV and Anderson Promotions, my name is Rob Howden. Bye for now.